Hey everybody, my name is Brandon. Welcome back to Cine Fashions, where we talk all things media. So today I have a DVD haul for you guys. And specifically, this is a disc replay, buy three, get six free haul. So I know before, like when they first opened, they were doing a buy three, get three all the time on DVDs. And then it was buy two, get eight for a long time last year. Well, it seems as so thus this year, it seems as thus, it seems as though this year they've settled on the buy three, get six free for the entirety of the year so far. So I have a stack of nine here. I have a whole other stack over there and I was just there earlier today and I have another stack upstairs. So plenty to share with you guys. But yeah, today we're gonna talk about one of the nine I grabbed. So let's not waste any more time at all. Let's dive right into my disc replay Buy three, get six free haul. So I guess I would consider all of these genre films, which is kind of a stupid term, but when I think of a genre film, I most usually think of horror and sci-fi or fantasy. But in this case, I also have an adventure film and a uh, Western in here. So it's gonna run the gamut of different genres, but mostly we're looking at sci-fi, fantasy, horror. But anyway, first up here, I said in a recent thrift store haul that I already had this movie because I genuinely thought I did. But after filming, I went back and looked and I didn't, but I did have, I picked up the sequel in that video. So I needed the original Romancing the Stone. So this is a very well-known 80s film and it's one I've never seen before. And I thought I had it in the collection because I found Jewel of the Nile at my local thrift store not too long ago. So I grabbed it. I'm glad I did because I was able to find this super cheap anyway. So it worked out. But yeah, I'm excited to watch both of these. I always hear that Romancing the Stone is just a much better movie, but I guess I will find out for myself now that I have both of them in the collection. So kind of the least genre of these genre films, we have Romancing the Stone. I had no idea. I just looked at the back of Romancing the Stone. This is a Robert Zemeckis film. I didn't realize that. So or I, maybe I knew it and I forgot, but either way, that makes me a lot more interested in it. So anyway, let's move on to the Western that I found. And this is a Howard Hawks film. Speaking of excellent directors, Rio Bravo. So this is another one I've not seen, but I've heard really great things about over the years and has John, uh, 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 John Wayne and Dean Martin in it. So I mean, I'm sure it's gonna be good. But anyway, this is a snapper case as well, which is awesome. I actually, as I'm filming, just posted my snapper collection on Instagram. So follow me there if you're not, but I posted that whole collection because I, I'm, doing a full reorg of my collection here. And one of the things I'm doing is separating out the snappers. And so these have their own case now, which is exactly where this is gonna go. Opening it up here, I am rambling a little bit and I apologize, but yeah, there's the inside there. So another one for the snapper collection. Love to see it, plenty of room to grow in that shelf too, which is always important. Anyway, we have Rio Bravo. I swear this is one I had in my collection at one point, but I decided I didn't want it for some reason. That was a mistake though, according to my current day self, because I want to see Land of the Lost with Will Ferrell. I love Will Ferrell. I think he is, he's one of my favorites. I just think he's hilarious. And so I don't know what prompted me to get rid of this one in the first place. I just decided to. So whatever, I have it back now, which I'm happy about, and uh, I'm very interested to check it out. I just, I like Will Ferrell, and that's pretty much the extent of it. I have no idea if it's any good. It's probably not by most accounts, but I really like him. So we will see what happens. Really good cast. Uh, Danny McBride is in this one as well, which is cool. So yeah, very intrigued to reown and finally check out Land of the Lost. Here's a movie that I'd always known about, but I always forget about until I was watching a YouTube video recently that talked about uh, James Cameron. Now, frankly, as I added it to my list at that point, I may have thought James Cameron directed this one, but of course he doesn't. That was just me being stupid. He is the executive producer of Sanctum. So this almost reminded me a little bit of The Abyss in that it's kind of an underwater adventure film. And so I'm very intrigued to see what it's going to, or how it's going to be. This is based on a true story, I guess. And it's about these cave divers who go down into this mountain cave and I'm presuming they get stuck down there and have to, you know, save themselves. But sounds interesting enough and it's produced by James Cameron. So I'm, I'm intrigued to check this one out. Probably one that would have really benefited from Blu-ray, but I found the DVD for cheap. So here we are with Sanctum. 
Here's another one I added to my wish list recently and was able to find it on DVD. I would love to upgrade to the Blu-ray, and maybe I will down the line, but for now, I grabbed The Day the Earth Stood Still with Keanu Reeves. Now, I'll be honest, The Day the Earth Stood Still with Keanu, not a great movie. I don't love it. But the reason I grabbed this is because on the inside, not only do you have the Day the Earth Stood Still remake, but you also have one of the, frankly, one of the greatest sci-fi films ever made in The Day the Earth Stood Still from 1951. One of the best sci-fi films I've ever seen. It is phenomenal. And so that's why I wanted to get this is because it came with both the movies, which I just think is awesome. So the Blu-ray does as well, I think. So if I find that for a good price, I will definitely be picking that one up. But for now, I have the DVD version of The Day the Earth Stood Still. Ooh, these next two I am really excited about because both of them are from the same studio. One of my favorites, The Asylum. So I don't often find DVDs from The Asylum at Disc Replay that I don't own. So it's always exciting when I do. But the first one here is an apocalyptic thriller. We have 2012 Supernova, of course, going to be the mockbuster of... 2012, which I really enjoy. So this one I am super intrigued to check out. This one is directed by Anthony Fankhauser. I'm sure I've seen a movie or two from him, but I don't recognize the name offhand. Much, you know, much to no one's surprise, I'm sure. But I am super intrigued to see how this one is, and I'm so happy to add another one to my Asylum collection. This is 2012 Supernova. And then the other Asylum I grabbed is one that I've been trying to find for a long time. They always had it on Blu-ray at my local disc replay, but it was a fake case or like a fake cover art. So I didn't want to get it, but I was able to find it on DVD and that'll suffice. I'm sure it doesn't need Blu-ray. I found Three Musketeers and I'll give you one guess what this is a mockbuster of. But on the back here, you guys know they like doing the poll quotes. It says, an action-packed thrill ride in the tradition of Mission Impossible and the Bourne Trilogy. So, I mean, come on. This, this is going to be a blast. I cannot wait to see how this one is. So, yeah, we'll check out Three Musketeers eventually. This one is a Cole McKay film. So, another, another Asylum director I'm not super familiar with. But, yeah, we'll see how Three Musketeers is from the Asylum. These next two actually share a similar theme, which I didn't realize as I picked them up, but this first one here is actually from the director of Wolf Creek, an excellent horror film, and it is a label that I am, you know, trying to collect. We have a Dimension Extreme release of Rogue, and you can see right there is that Dimension Extreme logo. I would love to have all of the Dimension Extreme film, uh, in my, films in my collection, but it's hard to find them as you go. I have a lot of the most usual suspects, I guess, but I'm sure there are a bunch out there that I still need to get. And similar to this, I realized I have about eight to 10 of the Maneater series. You probably don't remember what I'm talking about because who would, but it's kind of in the similar vein as, vein as something like Rogue. But anyway, that's another thing I would love to collect the whole series of. So anyway, I'm rambling, but this one looks really cool. A crocodile thriller of some sort. We have Rogue. Last but not least is in a very similar style because it's another of the main eater type films. We have Burning Bright. And I've actually seen this one and fittingly, you can actually see on the inside, this is an old Blockbuster case, which is super fitting because that's how I watched this in the first place. I rented it from Blockbuster back when I used to have that like pass thing that they offered in the summer. That's how I watched this. And I enjoyed it. I think I gave it Three and a half stars on Letterboxd, if I'm not mistaken. And it's just a fun movie. These two girls are stuck in their house with a giant tiger. What's not to love there? I love home invasion. It's not really a home invasion, but sort of, kind of. I love when uh, movies are stuck in one location. And what's not to love about a big giant tiger? Like, this is awesome. That's why I really enjoyed this movie. And that's what made me check it out in the first place. So... Good movie, highly recommend it if you've not seen it. Again, it's not going to change your world or anything. It's a, probably a three and a half out of five star film, but pretty good for a horror movie like this. So I definitely recommend Burning Bright. And that is going to be the last of this stack of nine. All right, so that is another stack of nine from Disc Replay. And whenever I find horror anymore, I get super excited because it just, I don't see a ton there all the time anymore. So it's always cool finding horror and the other films here, I think are gonna be a blast to get through. But I recommend Burning Bright, but more importantly, I, I wanna hear what you guys recommend out of this pile. 
What is the movie that stands out to you the most that I need to put at the very top of the list? Let me know what your thoughts are on that and anything else down in the comments. I always appreciate anything down there. So thank you guys so much for that support. Before you leave, if you could just hit that like button down there, that engagement really does help me out. So thank you so much for that. Before you guys do take off though, I will just encourage you all to consume some media today. I'll catch you next time.